Hello. It's been a while since I uh, stepped in front of the camera, just me, talking. Uh, lately I've been streaming a lot. That's been cool. Uh, it's a way to give me some content. There was the Halloween short film that I made. That was cool. Thank you for uh, those views. What I want to talk about today is probably something that I should have made two months ago when it came out. Two months later to the day, I'm finally going to talk about it. I made a video, I think, back in June or July about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Now, I was going to do a review the day it came out, or like maybe like a day after, but I really wanted to... I really wanted to like get a feel for the game and like experience it, like the lasting effects and everything. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the whole franchise, not just the first game, uh, has been my favorite game franchise since I was four. The very first video game I ever played was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. Now, like this, this franchise has been with me more than half of my lifespan and it's n more than three-fourths of my life it's crazy uh i feel like this game has shaped me up to the human that i am today and that that might sound like corny and shit but it really did i love skateboarding i can't fucking skateboard but i mean that's why they made these it, it got me into the type of music that I love to death. Punk rock, you know, early 90s hip hop. And I feel like if it wasn't for Tony Hawk, I would have never discovered, you know, punk rock. And I probably would have never been in a punk band. So the games do hold like a lot of meaning to me. And I feel like they're a big reason on why I am who I am today. Um, so, obviously these series has had, like, its ups and downs. It's had some, it went through some shit. You know, like, it went up, 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 the fan favorites, and then it just slowly declined down. Uh, some people would say that the start of that was with American Wasteland. And to those people I say, gotta disagree with you. Some people would say it began with Project 8, and I can kind of see where that that can be the start. But I feel like as soon as Neverstop stopped producing the games, um, that's when it really went to shit. Because I, I love Proving Ground. You know, Proving Ground being the last game that Neversoft made in the, the franchise. I love that game. I still think it's like one of my favorites. I probably put it in my top five. Uh, yeah, unpopular opinion. Don't hate me for that. But as soon as Robomoto came along, that's when the franchise, like, really started to go to shit. Uh, we got Ride and Shred, which I have, I've never played Ride. Uh, you know, I was only nine years old when that game came out. Uh, I obviously didn't have a job and, you know, I don't. I don't think it really even interests me that much to ask for it for Christmas. But I did save my money and I got Shred like two years after it came out. And man, that game fucking sucked. Uh, I hear a lot of people say that it's like the better version of Ride. But man, Ride must have sucked like really bad if Shred's the better version. I don't know. I also hear some people say that Shred's worse. Either way, um... I'm glad I finally tried it out to see how bad it was for myself. Uh, okay, and then Pro Skater HD. I played the demo. I never bought the full game myself, but man, I remember seeing that fucking trailer. <laughs> you know, Tony Hawk riding around the warehouse, and I was like, holy shit, that looks so good. <laughs> the graphics look amazing. Tony looked cool just like the the complete like overhaul of the warehouse was n beautiful and then i saw gameplay of it and no thank you 
I played the demo for myself and I got like the feel for like those floaty as fuck, like totally glitchy controls. And I didn't need to buy it. I needed I didn't need to buy that game. But then after that, we all know what fucking came next. Pro Skater 5. Now here's the thing. <laughs> This was the only fucking skateboarding game that we had until this came out fucking five years later. This is all we had for the PS5. PS5, fucking idiot. PS4, Pro Skater 5. That was a game that I I could not admit sucked. I got I remember getting that on Black Friday 2004. 15 for only 20 bucks and it was they were still selling it for 60 at that time so i got a really good deal and i remember playing it i just could not bring myself to admit that that game's shit um i don't know if the stream's on my channel but i recently went back to play it i think it was a day before the demo came out for one and two and uh you can't even play the fucking game anymore the servers are shut down you know, they just gave up. You know, I don't, Robomoto doesn't even exist anymore. The only thing that you can do to play that game is create your own park and just skate in it. Can't even, you can't even skate in any other, like, player-created parks anymore. So, oh, I made the warehouse, and I skated it, and I was just shitting all over the game. It wasn't my intention. I just don't like Pro Skater 5, and that goes to show... Most people don't like Pro Skater 5 either. <laughs> so for five fucking years, that was the only Tony Hawk game we had on the PS4. And skateboarding game in general. There was no, like, skate remasters for PS4. So, yeah, it was it was kind of rough. Um, then there's Tony Hawk Skate Jam. I forgot about that, too. But honestly, is that even worth mentioning? It was a mobile it was a mobile phone game and they tried to charge you up the ass to play it. It was not worth it at all. So yeah. I don't remember I think it was May. May that the trailer for One Plus Two uh dropped. And you know, I saw it like our whole I guess you could say our whole uh outlook on these games have been fucked because of Robomoto. Since 2009 to 2015, they've just been dropping shit. So when, you know, the trailer for One Plus Two came out, I don't think anybody was, like, that excited. You know, it's like, oh, okay, another remaster. They did that with HD. But when I was watching the trailer, I noticed at the very end that Vicarious Visions, Vicarious Visions was in charge. And most people that I've noticed usually jump to Oh, they did the the Crash Insane trilogy. And yeah, they they did. But what most people don't what most people don't talk about is they did the portable versions of the Pro Skater games for like GBA and then they, I think they did Skateland to Proving Ground for the DS. And those were good. They were really good. So I started to get excited. And that was mainly due to the fact that this is a French, like this is a uh, company that worked with the Pro Skater games. I believe that if there's any other company out there that can get Pro Skater other than NeverSoft, it's Vicarious Visions. So I was, I wasn't gonna like just automatically jump on the hate train like I saw some people doing. Like they were, the thing about like people is that they were let down so much by this franchise they just automatically shit on it like they found every little thing in like the little trailers of like the skaters talking about it they would just shit on it and they would just automatically compare it to like pro skater 5 and i completely understand that because we've been let down for so many years um so we had to wait until the demo came out and this, this is the funniest fucking thing. Uh, I got Skater XL in July. July 28th. Like the day it came out. And I was so hooked on that game. 
I was playing it nonstop. And I started to get bored, you know, because, like, there hasn't been an update yet. There's one coming uh, for uh, Community Creations. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. But as soon as the demo dropped for Pro Skater 1 and 2, it was over. <laughs> I finally got to play the game, and holy shit, it felt so good. Like, it felt so grounded and so stable. Like, and that's a fucking demo, dude. That was just one level, and we were... A whole bunch of people, I feel like their prob like their questions have been answered. Because I've never seen, like, a demo be enjoyed that much for the franchise. So, yeah, being able to play that, like, that obviously boosted my excitement up, because... The game felt good, it looked good, it sounded good, and it played, it just, it plays so well. So, I, I really stopped playing Skater XL, and I just focused on playing that one fucking demo until the, the launch date. When the full game came out, uh... I, I think before we talk about this, we need to talk about the soundtrack. Um, Spotify had like a playlist of the the new soundtrack and all the songs, like the original songs and the new ones that they put in the game. Holy shit. The fucking soundtrack is awesome. And it's like, I'm trying, like, I normally don't like, how do you put it, dick ride? But it was just so good. It's like... You had the original soundtrack, ex with the exception of, like, three songs. And most, like, I would say about 90% of the, the new songs that they added fit so well with the old soundtrack. Like, it just contrasted with it perfectly. Like, it just meshed together like it's meant to be there. And there's, like, two songs on that soundtrack that I just love so much. And I'm so thankful for that fuck this game for introducing me to uh, one junk bunny. The song Sedona. Oh my god, dude, that song is so fucking good. Um, and uh, All Souls. Oh my fuck, what is that song called? But uh, the Ataris, whatever that song's called. Like those are just such good songs, and like I've been listening to them on repeat. All Souls Day by the Ataris. Like, it's that type of uh, feeling that I haven't gotten in a while. Because I, I thought that, for what it was, Pro Skater 5's soundtrack was alright. My favorite songs on that soundtrack are uh, The Fences, Bad Things Are Bad, and uh, Anti-Flags, Stars and Stripes. But those were it. All the other songs I couldn't give a fuck about. But I really give a shit about... Most of the songs on the 1 and 2 soundtrack, they're all good. And they, they're they all, like, good for uh, casual listenings. Uh, what's that one song by Fiddler? Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but that song's also, like, really good. <laughs> and then you got MXPX, one of my favorite fucking bands of all time. Uh, I think I have a CD around here somewhere. I do not... Oh wait, yeah, there it is, but it's it's buried under some shit. I love MXPX. Um, I was always surprised that one of their songs weren't in the franchise, but uh, "Let It Ride," man, that's a good fucking song. And it playing after Millen Collins' "No Cigar," that's that's so cool. Millen Collins also one of my favorite bands of all time because of Tony Hawk. And I'm I'm just hoping that people that play this game can be a fan of uh these like new artists that are in the game for the first time. But definitely Sedona and uh All Souls Day and Let It Ride. Those are my favorite songs, like new songs on the soundtrack. And uh yeah, <laughs> soundtrack's great. Now uh with the full game I've been I've been listening to I've been listening to the shit out of Sedona, like since the Spotify playlist first dropped, and the first fucking song when I booted up the full game was Sedona, and ever I swear everything felt right at that moment, like I was all this fucking worry that I had 
just like minimal shit uh, was just gone, and I could not wait to play the game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just talk about the game now. Sorry, I rambled for a long time. You know, I, I'm just... I love this game so fucking much, man. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like casual players, and even some, like, diehard players, like, they'll find their flaws that will, like, completely ruin it for them. I, I really don't know why you would let it ruin it for yourself. I personally... Like, it has to be some fucking drastic shit for it to be ruined for me. But I feel like the stuff that does bother me is super minor and it doesn't get in the way at all. So, single player modes. You know, it's one and two. So, you're going to get the Pro Skater 1 and the Pro Skater 2 career modes. But in t instead, they're called Skate Tours. Pro Skater 1, I swear, gave me like the feeling that I'm playing a new game for the first time. Because they added five more goals to go with the original five that were in the original game. So it was like a new, completely new experience. Searching for uh, some of those new uh, objectives. Like in school one, you have to find textbooks and you have to, <laughs> you have to fucking wall ride bells just like in school two. And I swear, those motherfuckers hid like one of those bells in like the last spot I would have never thought to look so clever on you motherfuckers and I forgot I forgot when I was doing like my speed run live streams forgot where that last bell was again and also the textbooks the textbooks were uh, a bitch to find but it's that satisfaction of playing like feeling like you're playing a game for the first time uh the Pro Skater 2 Skate Tour is completely untouched. The only thing missing is no more money. You know, you're collecting stat, stat points. But Pro Skater 1 felt so fresh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, multiplayer modes. You know, you got your, like, your basic split screen. And this is another story that I'm going to get into like later in this video. I'm not like rushing this video. This game, this game series means a lot to me, and that we finally got a good game in the franchise after fucking eleven years. I feel like it's appropriate for me to ramble for as long as I fucking want. <laughs> if you choose to listen through it, I appreciate you. But if you want to skip through it, I'll try my best to like make time codes for this shit. So you got your like the standard split screen, which was missing in Pro Skater Five. That was fucking stupid of you guys. Fuck you, Robomoto. Literally, me and my brother, we played the shit out of Pro Skater. We played the shit out of every game. And you make Pro Skater 5 a one-player game. Fuck that. So. Yeah, you got your standard uh, split-screen mode, trick attack, graffiti, score challenge, combo mambo. I would have liked to see uh, King of the Hill... Some of the other shit, like Firefight, that was cool. <laughs> but uh, it works. It gets the job done. I'm just happy that you could set the time. It's just not automatically two minutes like the first game was. Then you have Skate Jams. Pretty much what they do is I think they put you in a lobby up to like ten people. Then uh, all ten of you just play, play the game. Trick Attack. Horse. Wait, no. Is Horse in there? Yeah, horses in there. Me and my brother played around. Uh, it's not in the the skate jams though, only in like the local multiplayer. But uh, yeah, trick attack, graffiti, uh, combo mambo, score challenge. Uh, you get two minutes to do that, and then you're ranked. You know, first, second, play, uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down. It's all right. I kind of at first. Because as I'm making this video, they had the update for uh, just private matches. Which I feel like they should have done in the beginning. But they they managed to fix it. So that's cool. Um, then you have like the super competitive, like the best of the best mode. <laughs> I haven't personally played that yet. Uh, I've just been having fun skating, skating around. Just playing the game. And then uh, also some side stuff in the single player mode. You got a uh, single session. That's standard. Free skate. That's also standard. But then you have speed runs. All the mission, like all the levels that have like goals, 
you can play you can play them but instead of the timer going down it just goes up and you complete all the goals in however long it takes you and then you're ranked on these leaderboards boards if you watch my very fucking awful Pro Skater 1 and 2 uh, speed runs, <laughs> if you watch those live streams, then you'll you'll see that it took me quite a quite a bit of time for uh, the Pro Skater 1 levels because of all like the new shit that they added. I thought I got everything, but no, there's like the the challenges where you have to do a specific trick that fucked me up, and I hate it. But it took me like about five minutes embarrassingly enough five minutes and then i'll check like the fastest score and they would do it in like just a little over a minute and i'm like how in the fuck that's crazy like i i would consider myself a good pro like pro, tony hawks player but then i get a reality check that there's a lot better than me <laughs> so yeah in addition to like that speed run, some other shit that they added, uh, there's game mods, which is pretty much cheats, perfect rail, uh, perfect manual, uh, no bails, tiny mode, giant mode. You get it from the beginning and you can turn it off whenever you want. Uh, I kind of miss like that luxury of uh, unlocking them. But yeah, there's the game mods. They're there. I never use them though. Uh, they don't have moon gravity. It's just like basic, like the basic shit to help you play the game better. But uh, yeah, firing up the game. Oh my god, dude. The best way I could describe it, it's the move set of Pro Skater Four with the addition of like acid drops and wall slaps. I don't think wall plants were introduced. And four. I think it was introduced in either Underground or Underground 2. But man. The game feels so fucking good. Like the other games. Like they felt a little bit floaty. But this one feels like really. Grounded. <laughs> like. The, your character has weight. And gravity is like stronger. Which. I never like really paid that much attention about. Like or paid that much attention to. But man, I appreciate it so much. Like, it makes the game f faster. And, like, you having to pull tricks a lot more, like, dead on. You have to be accurate as fuck. I love that shit. It feels, it just feels so good. Um, seriously, like, I'm gonna go out of my way to say this and this is probably going to be like an, a super unpopular opinion but I'm pretty sure I've had a bunch of those already this is like the best feeling Tony Hawk game that I've ever played like I'm sure yeah fucking underground introduced walking uh, American Wasteland added a whole bunch of other shit like riding your bike and throwing your board and hitting people but I've never felt a pro skater game as smooth and like as fast as this one. Uh, also I've just never had like this much fun playing a pro skater game for the first time. Like I, I'm just so impressed with like how this game feels. It feels so great. Uh, the graphics as well. The graphics are com just gorgeous. Uh, coming from pro skater 5 where it's like Every fucking character, everything has like a black line around it, and the graphics look like they were made for the PS2. This one looks like it's a PS4 game, and the graphics are just stunning. The lighting is per like the lighting is so good, and like all the levels are just done perfectly. Uh, some of them not so much. Like, not so much has changed. And I would give that to, like, the skate park in Chicago from Pro Skater 1. I feel like that one was pretty safe. It looks good. But then there's some that are just drastically different. And the biggest one, I already know what you're going to say. You're probably going to... You probably know what I'm going to say. The mall. I've always loved the mall. 
the mall from uh, Pro Skater 1 has always been one of my favorite levels. I was never really a fan of like how it just ended as soon as you reached like the end of the level. <laughs> but it's always been one of my favorite levels and to see it just the way it looks in that game all run down and shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> like they put so much care and design into like the design like the design of the levels. Every little thing like I I went around and like just studied that fucking level all the the stores and stuff there's a vans outlet in there i think there's a pizzeria in there uh, they actually put cars like in the beginning of the level because i think that's like the parking garage so yeah they were able to they did that that was a nice little touch but then like towards the end of the level like where you uh shoot that gap and then you go into the room where that giant escalator is there's a bunch of mannequins. <laughs> They're just staring at you. And it's kind of creepy. My friend has a big fear of mannequins. And I showed him that. And he was like, fuck off. Don't show me that. But uh, yeah. That 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 redesign's just so good. And I feel like if you want to get like the best idea of what. How like drastically different this game is. And how much care it is. Just compare this redesign to the one from HD, and it fucking blows it out of the water. Um, I also like the hanger. The hanger's like super smooth and slick, but then there's a fucking never soft tribute where all the fucking uh, Tony Hawk games pre Robomoto are just plastered on the wall proudly, and then there's a couple of never soft banners, which never soft means the fucking world to me, because not only did the Tony Hawk games get me into like everything I'm in or everything that I'm in, it wouldn't be the Tony Hawk games without Never Soft. So I don't think I ever showed you this. I got this tattoo back in July. No, actually January. Fuck. Yeah, I got this tattoo in January. It hurt like a bitch. <laughs> it was my first tattoo. But I always knew since like I was a young kid that my first tattoo was going to be this in this exact spot so it was, it was cool to finally like get it done uh the bales the bales are also i feel tastefully done rather than just flopping all over the fucking map or getting shot up out of the game like in hd and pro skater 5 you finally have like those classic bale animations and rather than like having to wait and like tap the button to like get yourself up it kind of like glitches, like it, it rewinds and you're back. So you can recover from your bails a lot faster and get into the game a lot quicker. I like that. I am a little bummed out that there's no blood though, but that's like, once again, that's one of the things I see people like talking about. Uh, that's not a game breaker for me. Like I could care less. Uh, the blood was cool, but I'm perfectly fine without it. Okay, creative content. You got to uh, create a skater. You can uh, create your own park, which holy shit, dude. This creative park is fucking amazing. <laughs> Literally, like, if I get bored, which rarely happens of playing, like, the 19 levels that came in the original game, I can just go to, like, the community-created maps and just skate, like, what people create because they make some fucking weird shit. Like, I have a couple of streams dedicated to uh, just skating the community created parks. And one of them was called Cloud9. And that was like one of the most chaotic levels I've ever played. But fuck, it's awesome. It's really cool. There's uh, some really nice stuff. Uh, you can go completely wild. And go ballistic. Just do whatever the fuck you want. You can even recreate some of the classic levels from the other games. And they will come out good. It's crazy and I love it. Um, challenges. Then you have like skater specific challenges. Just kind of like break up the monotony. There's a shit ton of them too to complete. You know, sp skater specific. You can use those to unlock like certain outfits. I think you can use them to unlock uh, another special trick slot and also that's another thing just having the luxury to finally edit your tricks again is just so fucking nice 
Thank you. Um, yeah, you could also get a uh, skate decks. You can unlock some uh, pieces for your uh, creative park. And also, you know, the in-game currency. You can buy uh, some some pieces for your park from the other levels, like that giant uh, sculpture in the mall towards, like, the end. It's like the two rails that, like, overlap. You can buy that. You can buy the fountain from San Francisco. That's cool. Um, you can buy some decks, some clothes, some hats. You can buy some logos, which I don't think... Anybody would do. I don't really care for the logos. Uh, the creative skater, I will admit, is very limited. And the one thing that, like, bothered me is none of the shorts go down past your knees. Like, they're all, like, knee-high. And I my, my creative skater is wearing knee pads just so it can, like, cross my knees. That's another nitpick that I have. Also, you can't, like, make your character fat. Like, I currently am right now. Can't do that. I feel like just some of the options are very limited and, like, very safe. There's not that much, like, clothing items that you can customize yourself either. There's, like, a few shirts that you can change the color, add a couple of logos, but can't really do that on a wide variety. So, yeah, that's, like, I would say that's probably my biggest nitpick is the Created Skater... Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> also, another thing to mention is like when you play the career mode, you pretty much only do it once. The only thing like worth replaying with other skaters is to get the stat points. You can uh, play through the career mode and halfway pick another skater, maybe with like better stats, and finish the career mode that way. You don't do it with, like, individual characters. But, I mean, I guess you could do that with the speedrun mode. It's it's not a deal breaker for me. But I would have liked, yeah, being able to play the whole, like, career mode again with a different skater. But it's whatever. You know, I, I know that bothers a lot of people. And I can understand that. So maybe, like, in a future update they can fix that. That'd be cool. <laughs> so, yeah, overall... I'm I'm so I'm just so fucking confused how this game shares the same DNA as this fucking game. Like how in the fuck does that happen? Overall, I would say that this is probably the best like Tony Hawk game I've played. <laughs> like yeah, there it does have its limitations and shit. But I don't think I've ever had this much fun playing a pro skater game. It's it's just so solid. And it's just so not glitchy like Pro Skater 5. Um Like seriously, it's like so well made. I haven't encountered any glitches other than maybe getting stuck on like a corner in the one of the creative levels, but it automatically responds you. And it'll tell you, oh yeah, you were stuck. So I feel like if I fuck up in this game, it's my fault, not the game's fault. Which is also something I'm like really grateful for. It's a fucking stable, good game. So overall, how would I rate it? I would probably say I would give it a 9 out of 10. I love this fucking game. It's great. It's everything that I could have asked for. It lived up to every ounce of the height that... I've put on myself since like the first trailer came out. I just think it's that good. And, you know, like all the other stuff that I've like nitpicked at, it doesn't break the game for me. Like I understand if it does for you, but for me it it's not that big of a deal for me. And I, I do hope that it does get patched up in like a future update. Cause I feel like everybody should enjoy this game or everybody deserves to enjoy this game. And the game just deserves to be this good. After like fucking five years of waiting, we finally got a good Tony Hawk game. And I'm excited for like what's to come. You know, a lot of people say that they want a remaster of Underground or a 3 and 4. I w Dude, I would love to see fucking Pro Skater 3 remastered. I would love to see a remaster of the fucking airport and the foundry. That would be so cool. 
But personally, do I want another remaster like one of the older games? Maybe. Maybe like as time passes. But personally, I am totally fine with this game right now. Maybe they can add some levels in this game. But I would love to see an original game. Like an original new game. Maybe Underground 3. Don't do Pro Skater 6. Because I think Pro Skater 5 fucked the name up. Because <laughs> any game that has to come after that in the franchise. I don't count this because it's a remaster. So it's technically the first and second game. But a new original game that has to follow a Pro Skater 5. I think it's not going to be that easy. But otherwise I love the game. And I love you guys. Uh, I've been on YouTube for 8 years now. And I finally broke 300 subscribers. You know I was going to make a video. But honestly I was so lazy and inactive. Uh, thank God for streaming though. Because I can get some content out there. So thank you guys so much. For uh, not only 8 great years of YouTube. That I've probably been present for 6 of. Uh, but also for 300 subscribers. And showing interest in either my fan films. Or just me rambling. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. And make sure, make sure you play this game, even if you're not a pro skater fan. I feel like this game can get you into the franchise and make you want to like explore it. So anyway, I've I feel like I've dick rode this fucking game already enough. So thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.